Ayan. Okay. Teka. Say goodbye, Skype. Good morning, Cam. Yeah, a typical thing for that you did growing up in Manila. I remember I really loved, I really enjoyed reading Philippine comics and watching Philippine B-movies on TV. Look at genre films, uh, cowboy movie, Philippine cowboy movies, Philippine martial arts, uh, mga fantastic, mga giant frogs, giant lizards, giant uh, etc. With zombies, with inga mga, tas mga nare with with the uh, different comedians or sa iba iba eh, may, you know Sprague and Height? No. Uh, Ramon Zamora was one of the Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee's of the Philippines, one of two. The other okay. one was Ray Malonzo. And uh, he, one of his famous characters was from a local sitcom. Uh, it's basic, Sprague and Height is, be, is basically a, a martial arts master who looks like a Nazi and speaks uh, fake German. Yeah. See, Wang Wang, do I mean Wang Wang? Oh, Wang yeah, yeah. Uh, the midget. Uh, yeah, the, uh, he's also one of my idols when I was young. Also, Nino Mulak, who was a, re- a real, you know, a real small person because he was a kid back then. TV program called Piling Piling Pelicula, like well, like chosen films. Uh-huh. Basically, random, you know, old films, usually black and white. Like aesthetically, I can kind of see parallels between that and and your films now. Like, what was it about that that, that drew you to that? I mean, it's just maybe the the strange. Like, is there anything else? I mean, like that sort of yeah, informs your style. It's not. It's not something conscious. Eh? Okay. So it's the uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just get it where you can, you know, like, uh, yeah, from from your dreams, from from your neighbors, from everywhere. With the, I also, I was also very much uh, into ping pong. <laughs> Before, I, this was a, around the time I I was very passionate with music because I, I started music at a at quite an early age, but I wasn't, I didn't like to do it. But then I all that's also the time. Uh, I also fell in love with table tennis, yeah. But then I I yeah. dropped ping pong because uh, I think my excuse back then was lack of government support. <laughs> 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 then uh, then at around seventeen, freshman college, uh, yeah, I, I there was a school exercise, uh, write a poem comparing the flying how to fly a kite and how to write a poem, and the teacher was so impressed that I was baptized as a poet and then, and then I became a poet in the school in the school uh, journal so yeah starting that time I started reading uh, poetry yeah I mean there was a time sobrang and I was so uh, into poetry not just the surrealist but the post surrealist mainly uh Thus, I also like and stumbled upon Vasco Popa, Ingeborg Bachmann, and mga, tas mga outsider poetry. Yeah. And then I saw this, uh, and I had no real, I had no plans of becoming a filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, then I saw this uh, crazy short film uh, by a Filipino named Joey Agbayani. He made a film called Lightning or Kidlat. Okay. And then. It's about a corrupt politician being killed by a giant flying pencil of a which belonged to this journalist who was interviewing. So I saw that I said, you know, I like to make films, and I thought, you know, filmmaking can be an extension of uh, my creative writing. I think with the arts, it's not that I, I, I thought or I believe that I was the best in the world. It's more of 
it's the other way around. It's more of like I I was I was just so like in love with it. I just wanted to make films or to make art that I didn't yeah didn't think about like you know is the other guy better than me or I just didn't that just didn't cross my mind. You're a very prolific artist. Like, how many films have you made? I don't know, but less than 200. You also, um, you write music. Do you still perform, like, in a band? Uh, yes, my latest band is the Contra Kino Orchestra. Uh, I also, well, I still play solo. With some, yeah. You sometimes with the with the, with the film, with a silent film of mine, or some other dead filmmaker, or or just music, yeah, depends. Yeah, because you do you do musical accompaniments, and you also do you also did some of the music to to Alipato as well, didn't you? Yes, I yeah, I mean I, the soundtracks for my films. What about the world of Mondo Manila? Alipato is the second film that you have set in this place, right? The, yeah, it depends on how you define the place. Because uh, Alip yeah, Alipato is uh, technically Mondo Manila too. But, okay. Um, in trying to make Mondo Manila, because I think I wanted to make it back in 2002 or 2003, mm -hmm. I made other features and other short films uh, yeah, in, in this in this world. Um, so there's Squatter Punk, there's mm -hmm. Overdose Nightmare, uh, there's also Manila in the Fangs of Darkness. Kasi the others were more realist. And, um, yung uh, Mondo Manila, ano ba Yeah, it's a different animal. No? And, uh, um, yeah, it's a merging probably of, I mean, technically the fantastic and the real. No? Ayan. And then Alipato is the, it's the only other film set in Manila with this kind of uh, aesthetics. Would you like would would you say that your films are about Manila? No, not really. It's just about me. So, <laughs> so would you say you have a very very minimal sort of editing process in in the way that you work? Editing? No, editing can take a long time. The shooting can take a very short time because that's where a lot of money uh, is uh, spent and I also produce my own films. For example, Alipato was shot in four days. In so, four days? Yeah, so, yeah, it's also, yeah, it's, it's both. No? It's uh, the aesthetics and also the energy, but also the budget, which affects this decision. So most of the shots are uh, one take. Instead of the, for me, the ideal is around three takes, but yeah. How long had the, had the project been in development before you started shooting it? Um, I don't know. A month ago? <laughs> A month before? Two months. So, so basically, so um, you, you apply the same kind of, like, energy towards making your films as, well, I guess it makes sense that that would kind of, like, come through to your films as well. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's good that that's the connection with, with, for example, with creative writing. Like I call it instamatic writing, which, which basically, for for most of my poems, I didn't revise. It's just I, I wrote them in one sitting. Uh, there's a, there was a point I wrote two hundred poems in two days, and and so the same with music. I've written, you know, the like a uh, complete song cycle and uh, a full concept album in in one sitting. I yeah, I just imp and I, you know, I improvise, and that's music. And yeah, Frank Zappa said, you know, what is music? You start somewhere and you end somewhere, and you call it music. It's same with film, same with same with literature. I'm wondering one who these child actors are, and then two, I guess your yeah, what your fascination with with child criminals is exactly. Di ko naremala yun. Pero yung the child actors, 
uh, all of them are non-actors. It's the first yeah. time they acted, except for the the boss. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They. they I, I had very specific uh, yeah, casting requirements. Not so much the acting talent. I mean, except for some like this. This uh, kid has to learn. Has to know how to sing, etc. But uh, in general, it was just based on their on their looks. I wanted the I wanted the cute baby to play day old chick, but then I didn't know he was. Because during one of the breaks, his mother was was making him smoke cigarettes. Yeah, so you know, just maybe he had to alleviate the hunger or something. But it's just, uh, yeah, that's what they did. How was how how was it working with that? We're working with, I mean, not just non actors, but I guess like non actors from a very specific sort of reality. Yeah, it's different energies. Now just. Uh, just let them let them be uh, yeah for, for example the in the grocery in the grocery scene uh, yeah this uh, one of one of the kids just really had you know just uh, just did what he loved and uh, ruled the scene and the owner of the grocery hated us for it <laughs> we wanted to do another take but yeah they picked us out <laughs> Did you did you tell him beforehand what you were going to do? Yes, of course, but you know, words can only do, you know. Siguro nga, itong, I mean, while talking, I, I think I'm just a very naive and idealist uh, person. Right. And I'm also kind of a dinosaur who doesn't want to change. <laughs> that seems really counter, that seems really counter sort of productive to the way that you make stuff I mean, yes because I don't, as I said when making films I don't think much you know <laughs> <laughs> I just make them I know I'm uh, I'm Saint Francis is a uh, Saint Francis of Assisi's instrument of peace <laughs> how do you mean I, know, but I think uh, the filmmaker is just a vessel of, uh, yeah of whatever Okay. The universe okay. wants to release. Some of my films, I don't... I mean, I mean, I love all my films, but at the same time, you know, I think some of my films are not... As I, and then on the one on the one hand, I said film, all of my films are self-expression. At the same time, some of my films, I think the primary audience is not me. It's someone else in this planet. <laughs> So, can you tell me a little about how your films are received back in the Philippines? I mean, I don't know. They're not received because I don't give it to them. Just okay. <laughs> you don't. You don't have. Yeah. You do you have showings I mean, in the Philippines. We, we show, have we shown Alipato? Ah, yes. We we showed Alipato. I think thrice. One in Manila, one in Cebu, and one in Davao. Um. Yeah, because the whole distribution system is, you know, fucked and uh, it's very corrupt. Uh, the theatrical mafia owns everything and Hollywood is dominating. Right. Everything. And, uh, yeah, and the energy for an independent filmmaker to, to mount the screening is uh, too much. You know, I'd rather just spend it to make another film. Okay. So at one point, I just gave up. Your latest film is enjoying some um, some exposure. Is how? Well, how's... Not, yeah, not really. I mean, so it, uh, of course, I wanted, I want, I want my films. I want Balangiga to be seen by more Filipinos, by, by all Filipinos. But yeah, the, as I said, the distribution, the, the distribution system is uh, is not working for. The independent filmmaker for the small filmmaker, so it's just uh, yeah, it's just too much work for yeah, for one for person, nothing. right? Maybe the next generation can watch my films. 
Yeah, I guess it's a terrible sort of irony that a lot of these like Philippine films, like yours, for example, are enjoyed more outside of the Philippines than than they are domestically. Yeah, I mean, it's, as, as I said earlier, it's the very, I mean, the corruption is everywhere. It's not just, uh, uh, you know, in the, it's not just the, in the Senate. Sure. And then it's, it's also in cinema. Right, also, right. I'd rather spend the energy to, you know, just write another poem, write another song, write and make another film than trying to, uh, Fight the dragon. <laughs> right. I give. <laughs> I've given up. Well, I don't know. I mean, you're still making films, like. Yes, yes. I I, I haven't given up on making films or, or, or in creation, but I have given up on the distribution aspect. It's not my cup of tea. Um. Okay. So my next question might be something you've probably heard a lot in this, maybe in this past year or so. Um. So. Considering the film and considering that it was released in 2016, like I'm thinking that a lot of people here and what they know about the Philippines, you know, is, is relating to like Duterte and his and his war on drugs and considering like when the film was released and like, you know, what it shows, like it seems really prescient of like, of all of these acts of violence that have been happening yeah, in the Philippines. I mean, I don't like Duterte, but you know, he's not... He's not the most evil man in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, like considering the Philippines' the, history. Yeah, there are more of more of those in the cinema world. Just joking. Um, <laughs> the yeah, I mean, all of this violence, corruption, and all that have been ex in existence for you know several decades and has not been you know eradicated. And yeah, it's still just it's like a virus just. Yeah, getting stronger each year. So. Yeah, and I guess. But on the on the one hand, it's good that you know people are aware. I people outside the Philippines are aware of what's happening in the Philippines, but yeah, they shouldn't also think that it's just because it's just happening now, and it's just because of one man. You know, it's the the whole system is corrupt. It should be blown up. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think I think I've I've pretty much reached the end of my of my questions. Right. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo Din. Maraming salamat. Thank you.